Recently, I've been replaying all of the 2D Mario games for my upcoming ranking of every level. As I've been constructing my list, I've noticed a bit of a pattern in what things I do and don't like. In a previous level by level episode, I mentioned that I don't really like underwater levels. While that is the level type that makes up a majority of the bottom of the list, probably because they suck, they're not the only level type to be found at the bottom. One other type of level that I'm personally not much of a fan of are the auto scrollers. These lock the camera on a set speed, which forces the player to more often than not go very slowly through the stage. These just feel tedious most of the time, and while there are a few good ones, I think for the most part, I'm not really a fan. Lucky for me, many of the 3D games don't really have auto-scrollers. Since they obviously take place in a 3D space, it's harder to really lock the camera and have it move on a set path. But that's not to say they haven't tried. Mario 64 is one of my favorite games ever made, and while Odyssey definitely has it beat, I still quite enjoy many aspects about it. That is not to say the game is perfect though, not by a long shot. Many of its stages are honestly pretty weak. Both of the water stages are pretty annoying to go back to, and to many, they're the worst stages in the game. However, I think there's a level that so terrible, it just barely edges them out. That would be the final main stage, Rainbow Ride. Welcome to another episode of Level by Level. Today's episode is actually going to be a bit of a quick one since I'm busy this week. Normally these level by levels are really long since I love to praise things, so I thought, hey, let's be a hater instead. <laughs> Rainbow Ride is probably my single least favorite 3D Mario stage off the top of my head, and in this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain why. I'll be separating this into a few different sections. I'll start with the level's aesthetic, then move on to the layout, and then end with its seven stars. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, Video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel at 200k I'm ranking every 2d mario level and let's jump right into the aesthetic all right rainbow rides aesthetic you ever play a roblox obby before yeah so right off the bat rainbow rides aesthetic is one of my least favorites in the game now it's supposed to be this game's main sky level which i guess it does accomplish by well being in the sky but pretty much everything else we see here has nothing to do with each other i guess there are a few things i like so let's get those out of the way first the level's iconic flying ship is cool and fits in with the sky theme pretty well it's not just a boat that's simply floating in the sky either as it actually does have some wings near the bottom it makes total sense to me why this was chosen to be the main focus of the level when it became a stage in smash it fits with the theme in an interesting way, and it looks cool. In addition to the ship, I also like the Rainbow Roads. No, not that Rainbow Road. We'll talk about them a bit more when we get to the layout section of this video, but for now, all you need to know is that they're pretty prevalent in the stage, and each road has a flying carpet to ride. Like the ship, it fits the sky theme well, and is pretty creative. But that's where the compliments end. Every other aspect of this stage is literally just random garbage. I mean, there's just like a floating house here. Who lives there? <laughs> There's also just a maze? Okay, sure, why not? And if you look at the bottom of the stage, just a whole lot of random obstacles. I'm sorry, I love tricky triangles, I didn't mean anything. But are you guys starting to see my problem? There's absolutely no cohesive theme here. One of my favorite things about levels in 3D Mario games are the world they build. It's the reason I even bother discussing aesthetics in these videos. Every other level in Mario 64 has a pretty strong theme behind it. Pabon Battlefield is a battlefield at the foot of a mountain, Shifting Sandland is a desert surrounding a pyramid, Big Boo's Haunt is a spooky ghost level. But the most you can say about Rainbow Ride is that it's random objects thrown in the sky. Sure, I guess you could argue that makes it unique, but this Rockhopper house I made in Minecraft is also unique, doesn't make it good. And you know what? I'm kind of reconsidering that uniqueness compliment because that certainly does not apply to the music. Now, most stages in this game do share themes with one another, which is fine as long as it fits. Both snow stages share a theme, both water stages share a theme, that all makes sense. Rainbow Ride uses the slide theme. Now, yeah, this is a good song, but I really don't feel like it fits that well. TikTok Clock also uses it, but I feel like it fits there more with its chaotic nature. The slide theme is very fast paced, and as we're sadly about to see, that doesn't really fit Rainbow Ride all too well. I think it's time we take a look at the layout. While the aesthetic was certainly mediocre, I could have easily forgiven it if the layout of the course was at least fun. I titled this video the worst 3D Mario stage, do you think it's gonna be fun? Now if you just look the map of the stage, you can basically already tell there's no cohesive design here. A lot of the stages in Mario 64 and other games have a main path with areas built off of it for the exploration. Taking Babon Battlefield for example, we could easily draw a path from the spawn point all the way up to the top of the mountain, and we can see that the other elements of the stage are built around that. The chain chomp guarding the gate is right before the tilting bridge, the red coin star is spawned right after it, and so on. But if we take a look at Rainbow Ride here, there's not really a singular destination at all. Now that's it's not a bad thing by itself. I mean, we recently did an episode on Odyssey Seaside Kingdom, and I praised it for doing basically the same thing. The difference here is that it's not really done to help build exploration, it's just to have a bunch of unrelated junk. But if this is all floating in the sky, how do we get to it? Well, do you remember those rainbow roads I said I liked before? I lied. These right here are the main reason this level is so awful. In this stage, there are a total of four rainbow paths that help you reach several of this level's different locations. Now, you can't stand on the rainbows, instead you have to ride moving carpets on them. But these things take 
forever. A majority of your playtime in this stage will be purely waiting, which makes coming here an absolute nightmare. This is why I mentioned auto-scroll levels at the start of this video, because that's basically what Rainbow Ride is. If you want to reach the house, you have to take a carpet. You want to reach the ship? Take a carpet. In fact, want to do anything in this level? Take a carpet, because it's the very first thing you're shown here. Now yes, you can skip this carpet by long jumping over to this pole. In fact, many of these carpets can be skipped with tricky jumps. But I also want you to look at this from the perspective of a younger, more casual player. The intended method to do anything here is to take the carpet. This first carpet ride alone takes about 25 seconds, which you have to do at least six times. And I say at least because babies are probably bad at the game, so after every death, they have to do nothing but wait for an eternity to get a chance to try again. Now, like I said, you can indeed skip this, and that does make this stage a little bit better to play. But if a majority of the player base is straight up not having fun most of the time, I think there's a pretty big problem. Now, once you get off that first carpet, the stage basically becomes a pick a path. You're placed on these spinning platforms with a Lakitu over your head while you decide which way to go. Pretty much each path just leads directly to a star without the paths really feeling like they overlap much. Essentially, that makes the stage just turn into a collection of random linear platforming challenges and auto scrolling, which does not help this beat the Roblox Avi allegations. Looking back at this initial intersection, you can go left for two stars, straight forward for one, and right for three stars. Keep in mind though that if you decide to go right, you're dooming yourself to more endless carpet torture. There's not really much more to say about the layout without spoiling the stars, so I guess I might as well just get into that segment. So far though, Rainbow Ride is really not looking too hot. You know what, just to have a little bit of fun because I know Rainbow Ride sure as heck isn't, we'll be throwing each of these stars into a tier list. Every main Mario 64 stage has 7 stars if you include the 100 coin stars, so we'll be taking a look at all of them. Starting us off, we have star number 1, Cruiser Crossing the Rainbow. We start this star off the same way we will for every single star in this video, by taking the 25 second carpet ride. How exciting. <laughs> Alright, well once we get up to the spinning platforms, we then take a right, which means more carpet. Now there are, I guess, a few obstacles to avoid, like there are two blocks in your path. Real challenging and interesting game design right there. This carpet ride with the extremely exciting obstacles lasts for over 40 seconds. But luckily after this breakable block, you can get off this carpet and start riding another one. <laughs> Yeah, this second carpet literally just leads you to two more, one going toward the house and the other toward the ship. So taking the ship carpet ride, we have actually a slightly more interesting obstacle with the spinning platform. I do mean slightly, don't get your hopes up. The bottom of it has fire to burn the player, and the platforms attached to it can knock the player off if they aren't paying attention. Annoyingly though, you have to circle all the way around this platform, which just feels like filler to make this slightly longer. When I was younger, I also just liked to stand on the spinning platform instead of the carpet, but if you do that, you have to be careful because your carpet might just vanish. Anyway, moving past that, we then have to jump over three big blocks and then a pointed block, which I guess is a good evolution of the concept since you might slip off the slope, but you really don't have to change what you have to do at all. That does finally bring us to the end of the carpet ride though, as we could jump onto some donut blocks and then some solid ground. That puts us right next to the level's highlight of the ship. Unfortunately, you spend like two seconds there because the star is out in the open. Yeah, after having to wait on carpet rides for around two minutes, I was hoping for something a little more exciting. Now, yes, you can skip some of these with tricky jumps, but that does not excuse how long and boring the intended method here is. So for being needlessly long and boring, Cruiser Crossing the Rambo can stay in D tier. The fact that you can jump past the carpets is the only thing preventing this from being an F. Star number two, the big house in the sky. I'm sure just based on the name, you can figure out which direction we're heading in for this star. So after wasting 25 seconds of our lives, we then get to waste another 40 seconds of our lives on the second carpet before reaching the split path we saw on the last star. I do want to say though, this is already a really bad sign of things to come. That was just a minute of entirely repeated content with zero changes whatsoever. If there's one thing that makes an auto scroller worse, it's doing it multiple times. We're only on star two and we're getting repeats. And trust me, this isn't the end. But taking the carpet up to the house, it has a much more vertical path in the other carpet. I actually do think that leads to a decent obstacle. There are two very tall walls that the carpet will phase through that Mario cannot, so you have to try and find a way up them. You can either use the donut blocks off to the sides or try and make the big leap off the carpet itself. Personally, I always backflip at the last second since it gives you just enough height. Sure, this obstacle may not be anything crazy, but I do think it works pretty well. I guess that took away all their obstacle energy though, because we then go for another 30 seconds without anything in our path. Yeah, not even blocks, it's just blank. How could they think this was interesting at all? There's literally nothing to do but wait. Well, after that agony finally ends, you enter into the house and have to avoid fire from a fireplace, which I guess is kind of cute, but not hard to do at all. Now, if Nintendo didn't hate their player base, the star could have ended right here, but no, the carpet has to go back outside. From here, we just have to avoid some easy to dodge amps until we make it back into the house another 30 seconds later. Eventually though, if we manage to dodge the fire, we can rise up to the roof and finally grab this star. That was so boring. Sure, there are a few tiny things I liked, but the long stretches of nothing are absurd. What's even worse is that unlike the 
Cruiser Star, you basically had to take this carpet for the longest time. For those of you unfamiliar with Mario 64 speedruns, there was a trick known as Carpetless that let you skip this, but it required such complicated glitches that it was near impossible for a human to do. It wasn't until very recently a version was discovered that could actually be done in runs, which meant that no matter what, for over two and a half decades, you had to wait on this carpet for several minutes doing literally nothing. Yep, I'm moving this to F tier. The least they could have done was either make the carpet ride shorter or add obstacles, but no, we have to suffer. Star number three, coins amassed in a maze. Guys, I don't want to alarm you, but we actually have a good star. <laughs> This is the stage's red coin star. Every main level of Mario 64 has one where you have to collect eight red coins. Now, there are many different approaches stages can take for these. Some have the eight coins spread throughout the whole thing, whereas others have the red coins focused on just one location. In the case of Rainbow Ride here, all of the red coins are just found in one small area. Generally, I prefer the approach of having them spread across an entire stage, but this is Rainbow Ride we're talking about. I am happy to not take more carpets. That doesn't get us out of the beginning ride, but once we reach the spinning intersection, we can head straight. <laughs> This puts us directly into the maze and every single red coin is placed inside here. But be careful, there's some bombs, ooh. In order to navigate it, you have to jump around several obstacles using a combination of pretty much every jump type you have access to. The platforms are also quite small here, making it a good challenge. I honestly think this fits quite well as a more difficult take on the star type. Trying to do this as fast as possible is actually pretty fun too. So you know what? Good job, Rainbow Ride. I'll give this star a solid A tier. Let's hope this stage can keep it up. Star number four, swinging in the breeze. All right, 25 second carpet ride, you know the drill by now. This this time though, we get to take a left at the intersection and go down this pole. I think this is also a good time to remind you all that you can always long jump to here from the start, so if you can, do not waste your time on the stupid carpet. Anyway, this star is all about being a platforming challenge with a bunch of random elements. First, you gotta tilt the platform so you can reach the real challenge. That puts you face to face with the swinging platform the star is named after. There's two you'll have to use here in total, and this acts as a safe tutorial by having ground underneath in case you fall off. I think that's pretty nice for teaching the players how this element works, even if it wasn't 100% necessary. That brings us to a few donut blocks which we quickly jump off onto another tilting bridge. This time we have to angle it so Mario can squeeze between two other sets of donuts, bringing him up to the second layer. There's a fire bar you have to jump over, but it's pretty low to the ground so there's not much to worry about. Then you have to quickly jump for some more donuts onto a moving platform, which I think works pretty well as the donuts falling may force a player to jump a longer distance than they otherwise would have. But that brings us to the scariest part of the whole stage. A Goomba. Okay, but actually from there you have to climb up this weird slope with boxes in it, and then you finally reach the second swinging platform, completely over the void this time. This is a solid evolution on the concept, and it does feel quite intense. Jumping off this platform is also made a bit more scary with the extra fire bar, but if you manage to brave it, you earn the star. This one's alright, no real problems, but it is honestly kind of forgettable. I think I'm gonna put it at a solid C tier, not bad. Star number five, Tricky Triangles. Carpet ride, yay. This also brings us down to the pole path, but unfortunately, since this area is perfectly linear, we end up having to repeat a lot of the last star. Luckily, that is not nearly as bad as repeating a carpet ride, so I'm not gonna cry too much about it. The difference comes when we reach the Goomba, where we instead go straight instead of up the slope. This has us jump between a few donut blocks, oh, there I go. This has us jump between a few donut blocks before reaching the titular Tricky Triangles. There's a switch here that when you activate it, will cause all the triangles to temporarily flip, letting Mario stand on them. He has to be fast though, as they'll quickly turn back into slope form and force them off. This is pretty fun to try and run through, honestly. You can even make a few little shortcuts by side flipping through the triangles like this. The timer is also fairly tight, so I think this is a good obstacle. That then brings us right to the star, so overall it was a pretty fast one. I'd say I like it slightly more than the last star, but it's still a C tier, since a majority of the star is sadly repeated from swinging in the breeze. Star number six, somewhere over the rainbow. This is one of the worst stars in the entire game. First off, that name is absolutely no help. Every other name pointed in a specific direction, but this literally just says somewhere. Oh, yeah, very helpful. Now, normally I don't mind cryptic names too much since exploring can be fun, but I do not want to waste my time exploring the stage when it's so tedious. Now, luckily, if there is one saving grace, it's that since it's the last star, you could use process of elimination to figure out the only place you haven't gone to is this island, which does indeed hold the star. But how do we get there? Well, that isn't made clear at all, but the best clue you have would be the ship. Maybe there's a wing cap on there or something. So you take off on the super long two minute journey on the carpets. Well, when you finally get up to the ship, you discover you need to unlock a cannon. Okay. So you are very likely to have wasted an entire trip coming up here, which is made even worse by the fact that it's the exact same trip as the first star. But that brings up the question, where's the pink bomb? Have fun exploring. Yeah, so if you're unlucky, I could imagine some players taking the carpet all the way up to the house to try and find the pink bombs, since there are no obvious pointers. Luckily though, you don't have to ride any additional carpets to find it, as they're just hiding in the maze. But the fact that they're hiding at all in this stage means that several players are going to waste a ton of extra time riding carpets. Speaking of, we get to do that too now since we actually do have to ride up to the ship. So once we waste another two minutes, we can finally get back up there.
we finally get back up there and into the cannon. Luckily, this shot is really easy since there's a circular rainbow indicating where to shoot, which brings us onto the island. On here is just a chukya and a block with a star. You definitely don't want to get thrown off here, so you just have to get the star as fast as you can. Yeah, so overall, this is garbage. Not only do you basically have to do the entirety of star one all over again, but star one was a slow auto scroller, which makes this star feel like an even worse waste of time. And that's not even factoring how many players won't know that they need a cannon until it's too late. So no matter how you look at this star, I don't see how you could like it. They clearly ran out of ideas for stuff to do, so they just reuse the ship, which is so incredibly lazy. Easy F tier. I cannot stand this star. Star number seven, 100 coins. These are always hard to judge since everyone will of course do it differently. As the name implies, you just have to collect 100 coins, and what's nice is that you could do it at the same time as any other star, as it won't kick you out of the stage. Rainbow Ride actually has a surprisingly high amount of coins, with a grand total of 146. A good portion of that comes from the stage's blue coin switch, which is found in the maze area. This is actually a pretty neat blue coin switch, as it requires you to quickly wall jump up the maze to get all the coins. Sadly though, wall jumping in Mario 64 is horrible. If you do manage to do it though, that helps a lot with the 100 coins, but at the same same time, you could still get 100 coins without this. It'd just be significantly more annoying. Personally, I always just start with the stage with the blue coins, and if I miss too many, I restart, which is fairly painless. If you manage to get all the blue coins, or heck even if you miss a few, you can actually get all 100 coins you need without taking any carpets except for the one at the start. That is such a relief. This star had potential to be an absolute nightmare with us having to ride every carpet to every location. So for giving us the option to not sit on an auto scroller and a pretty cool blue coin switch, I think this deserves a B tier. But yeah, after taking a look at all those stars, I think you can understand why I hate Rainbow Ride so much. It is both extremely slow and extremely repetitive, two of the worst things I think you can combine. I guess you can combine bombs and puppies, I don't know. Add on that there's nothing to get from this stage aesthetic-wise either, and I think it's safe to say that this is the game's worst stage. I mean, even the water stages have a good luck and fantastic song. So I think my decision for Rainbow Ride's placement in the Mario 64 level by level tier list is clear, F tier. The very first F tier level in this entire series to get its own video. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you a massive Fly Guy fan and hate me for not mentioning the one in the stage at all? Let me know in the comments. I'll be honest, I was expecting this to be much shorter than it ended up being. I guess I ended up having a lot more to say. Not that this is particularly long, but it is long enough to the point where I have to cross my fingers I can get this out in time. So if it's a bit late, I apologize. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.